Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I'm Rod Ngonzi. Let's take a quick look at the headlines. Kosase discovers inconsistencies in the acquisition of Temangalo land. General Elit Mwine to seek legal redress over a parliamentary report. Execution set for U.S. killer who preyed on gay men. And in sports, Boma's captain Shadir Musa beaten at the All African Games in Morocco. Morocco. Mugalo Mohammed joins us on sign language in a bit. I am Rodan Gonzi. Let's dig into it. President Yori Museveni has returned from a two-day visit to Angola where he and his Rwandan counterpart Paul Kagame signed the pact to improve political and economic relations between Rwanda and Uganda. The head of public service and secretary to cabinet, Mr. John Mitala, received the president on arrival at Entebbe International Airport this afternoon. Others at the airport included Commander of Uganda People's Defense Forces Air Force, Lieutenant General Charles Luangalutaya, Assistant Inspector General Police Andrew Sorowen, and David Ahimbisiwe of Uganda Prisons Services. Parliamentary Committee on Commission Statutory Authorities and Enterprises, Kosase, has discovered inconsistencies in the acquisition of the Temangalo land by city businessman Amo Senze. The committee, chaired by Much India East MP Ibrahim Kasozi, discovered that the line of exchange of Temangalo land from Abbas Mawanda to NSSF was illegal. The Subcommittee on Commissions, Statutory Authority and State Enterprises has discovered irregularities in the lineage of the acquisition of the Temangalo contested land. The committee chaired by Ibrahim Kasozi learned that the re-entry of the land when Abbas Mawanda sold to Amos Nzei was done outside the law. Writing to you in the matter of our property at Temangalo Silo County, Wakiso, which as you may be aware had been the subject of parliamentary hearing in 2008 and a public hearing by the Land Commission inquiry in August 2018. One Nazim Mosa told the committee that his father, Mohammed Mosa, who died in 1997, owned the Temangaloti estate. The committee was meeting with city businessman Amos Nzei, officials from NSSF, and one Nazim Mosa, who claims to have had ownership of the land in early 80s. All these forms. Further, after we had departed Uganda, we were consulted by the United Nations to file documents to say if it left any properties behind in Uganda, which we did. We filed papers through the United Nations to let them know what our claim to the properties were and what assets we owned as agents in, in Uganda. I never saw anybody when I bought the land for more than 30 years, I never saw anybody. Mm. This gentleman, I met him in the, in the Commission of Inquiry. Although Amos Nzei acquired the land in 1993, some of the documents presented to the committee by the Commissioner Land Register shows that there is a possibility that Nzei was duped by Abbas Mawanda. You say it as, you have got all other documents apart from this instrument. I have not seen it, but also maybe if you allow me to, from the what I'm just seeing now, yes, it is most likely that it is not there. Most likely. So how then why that the entry was done? Because for a re-entry to be done, um, two things happen. There's a, an entry on the on the uh, the, 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 the 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 title out of which the list is created, which appears as it is. Then the list itself is ought to have been cancelled. And from what I'm seeing, the list is intact. Yes. So I say there is a problem somewhere. Yes. Officials from NSSF told the committee that they followed procedures to acquire the land from Amos Nzei. In our defense, we have found that we are bona fide purchasers of the land separately described Mango Block 296, Plot 21, which land was purchased free of encumbrances and without any, without any subsisting lease interests. 
The committee has tasked the land registry to provide the chronology of the lease on the contested land. The first entry was done when the lease was still running. And uh, the commissioner was not clear who did it. That's why we have given them time up to tomorrow to go and give us the chronology of the first re-entry. If it, uh, it was, it, we discover that the first entry was done illegally, that means the whole process has a question. The committee is also investigating reports of false acquisition of properties of Asians who were expelled during Idi Amin's regime. The properties in the question have been under the management of the Departed Asian Property Custodian Board since 1993. Susan Naonga reporting. Minister for Security, also Army Representative to Parliament General Eli Tumwine, is considering seeking legal redress over a parliamentary report. The report adopted by the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Discipline concluded that he assaulted the Kolo woman MP Cecilia Agua. But for us to go legalistic, is something which could have been resolved by saying, I'm sorry, and you apologize on the floor of the House, and now it drives us into this type of debate because you are all defensive, I think is not right for this House. I wonder how my sisters and brothers that represent the army in this parliament feel the moment every hour, every day, every second we get up and discuss issues involving UPDF, involving soldiers, involving generals. I conclude that we are we have the nostalgia of the past and we are filled with fear sometimes. But as members, I want to implore all of us to be tolerant. This was at Parliament on Wednesday evening after the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline presented a report on General Tumine's conduct. The two differing reports were presented by Karaki County Legislator Ongalo Obote Clement and his Bukoli counterpart Mugoya Gasta Chawa, who presented the minority report. From the conduct of Honorable General Eli Tumwini, the committee finds that he actually assaulted Honorable Gual. This observation is but traced in Black's Law Dictionary, which defines assault as the threat or use of force on another that causes that person to have a reasonable apprehension of imminent, harmful, or offensive contact. The committee did not properly evaluate the evidence in the totality. Indeed, if it had done so, then the committee would not have arrived at such misleading but also erroneous conclusions. Some disagreed, while others agreed, expressing differing views on both reports. The, the, the video was very clear. It's unfortunate it was silent, but the motion of General Tumwini, which I saw, did not in any way indicate whether an assault or an attempt to assault. On Thursday morning, General Eli Tumwini broke the silence about what he's going to do following findings of the majority report of the committee. No, what I intended to do is to request you to ask to request was this process providing the rights, was, it, was the process correct? Why the facts was this, was this hearing conducted in a proper manner? Was the process and the substance done properly? You know that's how we correct each other, and that's why they are provided. You know the constitution is very very interesting. It gives powers to one one arm of government and powers to another arm of government, so that there is continuous harmony. Tumine was willing to reconcile with the fellow legislators, but insists. He did not offend anybody. The people couldn't be allowed to even substantiate. I kept wanting to give them information. The, the one who in the minority report was willing to defend his minority report. The whole thing was, again, another continuation of mob justice. And that's my, my concern that I requested, can I make counter accusations as one of my freedoms and rights? She said, no, the speaker. So what can I do? But I put it on record that in that case, my way forward, and you see, is I will have to take it for judicial review. The Wednesday evening debate by MPs rejected the minority report 
adopting the main committee report during a plenary session, chaired by Speaker of Parliament Rebecca Kadaga. I now put the question that the question be put, those in favor say aye, the contrary, no. I now put the question that the minority report be adopted, those in favor say aye, the contrary, no. Aye. No, serve it. General Tumine plans to seek legal redress after faulting the committee for denying him time for defense. Henry Okrut, UBC. And our police, together with the State House Anti Corruption Unit, have raided Kaleji Labor Exporting Company in Wakiso District for unlawfully confining over 90 ladies. According to Kampala Metropolitan Police spokesperson Patrick Onyango, the ladies were set to leave for the Middle East, but the conditions in which they were being kept were alarming. These 90 ladies were being prepared for external employment by Kalij Labor Exporting Company in Stella Village, Najanakumpi, Wakiso District. They have been sleeping in this room for the last two weeks. Although the company is registered with the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development, Police and State House and Corruption Unit says the conditions in which they have been kept were pathetic. Got a call this morning that there were ladies who are being unlawfully confined here by the agency. So when they got that call, Kano Nakalema got in touch with the KMP to come and verify what was going on here. The DPC Katwe was tasked to come and uh, verify what was going on here. So they came and found, yes, people are in confinement, uh, people are sleeping badly. Uh, the unit immediately uh, coordinated with the police, uh, came on the ground, and indeed it has been established that uh, there are 98 uh, people here who stay in very pathetic conditions. The raid followed tip off from a concerned citizen and police says investigations are underway. So we are here, we are going to record a statement from a few, few ladies to find out what exactly is going on. Then after that we shall also record a statement from uh, the directors. And after that we shall get a way forward on what to do next. And normally, our legal advisors are the state attorneys. The proprietor of Kalij Lab Exporting Company denied committing any illegality. It's very unfortunate as our normal routine errands was going on. We just saw police coming into our premises. Probably they are here for a subject of investigation and we need to give them time. We don't know what is going on. Some of the ladies have testified against the company took long and it's like they were asking for money, money, money and I was like, ah, these, these guys are not good, good guys. I, I gave up actually. The way they're processing their things, the way they are doing their things actually shows that they are just con guys, I think. Uh -uh, there is not any problem. Yeah. On my side, I see everything is going well. We are happy of this company. Of course, we had some dubious stuff. Uh, who we arrested and some are in jail because this is high risk business. But as you may have realized, the issues of um, labor externalization with allegations of trafficking and exploitation of Ugandans have been on the increase and the unit has been at the forefront of investigating these matters with Uganda police. And that is what is uh, happening here this uh, afternoon. For UBC News, I am Philip Aguta. Every dream has a challenging journey. Ours began in 1998 with a mission to drive the development of a robust communications sector in Uganda we created structures to champion the dream we've evolved made discoveries supported great minds 
empowered Ugandans and fostered a vibrant culture, enabling communication for all. Down the years, we've created memories and networks, uniting generations and building great partnerships. Together, we can go even further. UCC, celebrating 20 years of achievements. Welcome to the first ever Uganda Tanzania Business Forum and Exhibition taking place on the 4th and the 5th of September 2019 at the Julius Nyerere International Convention Center in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Come and explore new business and investment opportunities. Come and participate in open preliminary discussions on finance, bilateral trade, infrastructure, extractives and their challenges before the heads of state, government ministers and policy makers as well as showcasing your products and services at the business Business exhibition. Registration is now open. Log on to www.businessforum.biz today and register to participate in the 2019 Uganda Tanzania Business Forum. Call us on 752-470-214 Uganda and for Tanzania 784-323-068. The Uganda Tanzania Business Forum is organized by and is proudly sponsored by Have you completed Senior 4 or Senior 6 and you want to do a two-year certificate or a diploma course? Makerere Institute for Social Development and affiliate to Makerere Business School offers programs in accounting and finance, business administration, procurement and supplies management, social work and social administration, information technology, counseling and guidance, human resource, project planning and management, journalism, secretarial studies, and many others. We are located on Sa Apollo Kegua Road next to Oilcom Petrol Station with a UBTEP Center number. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pain Arena. Introducing on the right corner Mr. Action, the reigning heavyweight champion in the ring against. Against the headache, the number one contender. And the bell rings. Headache charges forward with a steady right and a left hook. Action dodges. He misses out with an inch. Wait a minute. Mr. Action launches back with a kick. The final blow. He is out. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Welcome back. You're still watching News Tonight. Ministry of Health has received three ambulances and 31 motorcycles worth 728 million shillings from the United Nations High Commission for Refugees to boost Uganda's Ebola response plan. Minister for Health Dr. Jen Wuthacheng says Ebola is still a threat to Uganda. Ebola outbreak in the DRC is not yet going down. So even when you see a little bit of quiet, don't be mistaken. To date we have over 1,900 people that have died in the DRC due to this outbreak and over 2,000 people affected. We have been relatively quiet but with a high degree of surveillance that is ongoing because from time to time we get people sneaking into Uganda and leaving us with contacts that we have to follow up and to immunize. We just concluded immunization of over 120 contacts of a Ugandan who has a clinic and works within the DRC. He tested positive but from the DRC and that is where he is in the DRC. But obviously being a Ugandan, we had contacts in Uganda that we have successfully vaccinated. Ministry of Tesla Affairs has laid a foundation stone, a foundation rather, for the construction of its permanent main regional office in Soroti municipality. This will be a key achievement to the ministry to eliminate costs of renting office space and owning their own their premises. 
The Ministry of Teso Affairs was created by the Act of Parliament, but without its regional offices. Ever since, ministry officials have been renting office space on Plot 27 along Kakunglu Road in Soroti Municipality, but it affected service delivery. During the groundbreaking ceremony, Minister of State for Teso Affairs, Agnes Akiror, directed the contractor to allow local leaders to access the structure for monitoring the progress of the construction works. I want to direct the, the, the contractor that he should allow free access to the site by the leaders so as to monitor progress of the construction work. Soroti district chairperson George Michael Egunyu warned the contractor against shoddy work. Because we are normally blame that corruption in, in local governments, corruption in local government. So contractor, if you are here, I want to request you do your job. If you are going to give the chairman talking to the district money, you must not compromise work. The representative of the permanent secretary at the office of the prime minister, Dawudi Bukomonko, pledged his total commitment towards the construction of the premises. We are here to pledge our big support in terms of still ensuring that the project that is being launched today goes on well and becomes a very wonderful project at the end of the day. Shall always ensure that we supervise and see what the work being done. Teso local leaders embraced the project, saying it will help the ministry to ease service delivery. This structure is worth 900 million shillings and it is to house minister's office, small boardroom and four other offices on the first floor. Two offices, a reception, a main boardroom and a store on the ground floor. Dokas Muno, UBC TV News. Meanwhile, government has set up a state-of-the-art technical institution to allow more people access competence-based skills in Agago district. As Ivan Kawa reports, the institute will offer a wide range of technical courses. It has been proved that vocational training that offers skills to learners will reduce mass unemployment among young people graduating from higher institutions of learning. And for rural areas, several sectors require vocational skills to develop. In Agago District, Northern Uganda, Kalongo Technical Institute will equip the learners with hands-on skills even for neighboring districts of Soroti, Kapchora, Dokolo, Lira, Gulu, Kitgum, Lamuo, Padel, Otuke, and Abim. It has a 660 student capacity with courses focusing on building and construction carpentry, ICT, mechanics, among others. This is where the government has put a lot of funding at least to skilled the Uganda. And we want to appreciate really the government of Uganda to give the money to this school. This school started as the principal had mentioned in 1983 and it has suffered a lot. During, even during the, the war, people cannot come and access the area because you know very well that most of our people were in the camp and they cannot come to this place. The fees are subsidized to enable those enrolling benefit, but the mechanics course has many admissions. What we, we looked at is first of all, the community around do not have enough to support their children at school. So we sat down with the board and put a moderate fee of 250,000 shillings. That is for privately sponsored students. Then for government, they pay 150,000 shillings because government also supports them. So the Government must ensure that the capitation grant is increased for the smooth operation of the institute. You know, running technical education is very, very costly, more especially in terms of training materials. You'll find that a department may need in a term may need about six million shillings to procure training materials alone for that term. Now with the, gov with the, with the funds, the capitation grants that ministry gives us, you find that it will not take us long because that money also gets us for feeding and other administrative costs. Technical education will give competent best training to boost productivity. When you look at the courses that we run here, 
they require somebody who is really sound in mind. The mathematics that we do at this certificate level is the mathematics they do at A level. So somebody who is not academically sound cannot manage these courses. So we need to have really a total mindset change so that people look at technical education as the best. Construction of this facility is in line with the NRA manifesto that focuses on increasing teachers' salaries and investing in the education infrastructure to ensure that Ugandans have access to quality education. Ivan Kahua, UBC News in Agago District. Pursuing and delivering health services in rural areas of Teso Sab region has become a problem for health workers in striving to save lives. In Kabramaido district, health workers hire public means of transport for emergency care services at the expense of the patients. Although government has procured three ambulances that will serve three out of ten districts of Teso Sab region, delivering health services remains a challenge. In Kabramaido and other nine districts of Teso Sab region, patients pay between 50,000 to 100,000 shillings to hire public emergency care services. At Kabramaido Health Centre 4, the facility faces financial constraints to meet the costs of repairing three ambulances grounded 10 years ago. So for all the time we've been you know, striving to achieve the service of referral, to our regional referral which is Soroti, and sometimes even to Lira. But that was quite been costly and the uh, cost has always been going to the tenants of the patient. At Kum Health Center 4, the situation is not different. The transport of patients from the health unit to another health facility as it comes to the area of referrals. We had an all ambulance, which every other time we get challenges with it. So, government has procured three ambulances worth 800 million shillings to serve three out of the ten districts. In order to save the lives of our expectant mothers in need of emergency care services and the lives of other persons that are lost due to lack of easy referral services, the ministry procured three ambulances last financial year that have been allocated to Soroti District Local Government Kumi Health Center 4 and Kaberemaido District Hospital. Although government has extended support in delivering health services, there is still a problem for Teso Subregion where the local leaders are debating how the three ambulances will be shared by 10 districts. We don't want a situation where, 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 where local leaders across the region, or maybe particularly in, in the center of Teso, become rigid that, okay, this is our community. The, the so region, region of hospital is for all of us, and the Teso affairs is for the, all of Teso district. So long as you repair for the damages you are going to use the year, we have no problem. Be rest assured, we shall share these things. After all, Amuria was Teso. Kapele Byung district here person, Simon Eruagu, appealed to government for more support. I want to particularly ask the Minister of Test Affairs and the government of Uganda to consider their giving of ambulances to all the districts. Kapelebyong inclusive. You know, when you go to Kapelebyong, the roads that we have in Kapelebyong are the worst in the country. And we see really there is a high need for Kapelebyong to get an ambulance. At the moment, the ambulance that we have, it is just an ambulance that breaks down any time. Doc Kaskmano, UBC TV News. Kole Resident District Commissioner Johanna Omara Olweni has decried the increasing cases of wetland encroachment for rice growing. According to Omara, the vice is being fueled by politicians who have decided to open up rice gardens in the wetlands and rallying the masses to oppose the eviction. He maintains that he is implementing the president's directive of getting people out of the wetlands to protect the environment. I had already made up my mind to go and get the people out of the wetland. But you know, even the MPs also came in to fight me because of the wetland issues. Hardly did I know that even MPs have grown rice in the swamps. So I had now planned to sacrifice one of the MPs and, and then have people run away from the wetland. 
It's a very complicated thing, for sure. Um, to see legislators make laws in parliament and then themselves turn around and break those laws. And then they expect the RDCs to keep quiet and not to talk. It's a sad thing. I am speaking this out of uh, bitterness because they took my name from here to the president's office that I have gone with a, um, maybe a battalion of, uh, of UPDF to go and beat people in the swamp. And it's total lie. Just because of political, they want, somebody wants to make a political capital. But you know, until the president's office came here and verified those facts and found lies, they all went quiet and they also remained quiet this way. Because you know the truth cannot be hidden. The truth is, apart from telling the RDCs to go and get, you know, to go and negotiate with the people, we know these people very well. I know my people in Kole very well. These are people who will say, our president has said we should dig the gardens of rice and, and misquoting what the president has said. The president simply said, we are protecting the natural resources for, the, for Ugandans. And it is the beneficiaries are our own people here. When they dig away the, 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 the soil in the turn it upside down in the swamps, it dries naturally, it, the swamp begins to dry. Meanwhile, government of Uganda and Toro Kingdom have agreed to form a verification committee which will record and confirm property that belongs to the kingdom. This was followed by the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the government and the kingdom at State House in Tebe. President Museveni signed the MOU on behalf of government while the Umukama of Toro Oyo Nyimba signed on behalf of the kingdom. In a press conference held at Grand Imperial Hotel in Kampala, the Prime Minister of Toro Kingdom, Bernard Tungwako, uh, said among the property that was agreed to be returned to the kingdom include the titles, buildings, natural resources like the forests and rivers, among others. And since that time, the assets and the properties of Toro were in the hands of the central government. We have been deprived of the opportunity of utilizing our properties and assets for all that long. Maybe I will take this opportunity to thank the NRM government, which in the 1993 constitution, they entrenched that article that returned the assets and properties of capital institutions. Though very much we have been in waiting, it was time yesterday when we finally send the MOU that is returning the properties and assets of the Torquay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pain Arena. Introducing on the right corner, Mr. Action, the reigning heavyweight champion in the ring against... Against the headache, the number one contender. And the bell rings. Headache charges forward with a steady right and a left hook. Action dodges. He misses out with an inch. Wait a minute. Mr. Action launches back with a kick. The final blow. He is out. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. 
The Parliament of Uganda will host the 64th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference from the 22nd to the 29th of September 2019 at the Munyonyo Commonwealth Resort. The conference provides an opportunity for parliaments to discuss best practices, governance values, and socio-economic aspirations of the Commonwealth. The conference will run under the theme Adoption, Engagement, and Evolution of Parliaments in a Rapidly Changing Commonwealth. Discussions will focus on climate change, innovations in parliaments, persons with disabilities, youth, urbanization, sexual harassment, and separation of powers, among other topics. More than a thousand delegates from 54 countries are expected, and this will be an opportunity for Ugandans in the social and economic sectors to benefit by providing their services. Follow us on the hashtag 64CPC2019 and on Facebook at 64th Commonwealth Parliamentary Conference. This message is brought to you by the Clock to Parliament. Forget the long line hassle. With one expert, the power of placing the perfect bet is at your fingertips. Bet anytime from anywhere. Best of all, payment is instant. Place your bet on whatever you choose. Watch your games, bet games, sports, and even live betting. Winning has never been this simple. Bet with one expert. Advanced gaming is regulated by the Lotteries and Gaming Regulatory Board. Betting is addictive and can be psychologically harmful and it's only eligible to persons above 18 years of age. <clears throat> this is still news tonight in business news. Drivers under the umbrella body of regional lorry drivers and transport association have embarked on strategies of reducing accidents across the country. The chairperson regional lorry drivers and transport association Byron Chinene says drivers must follow professionalism while on duty. At least 80% of deaths are caused by road accidents. Police report shows that in the last 10 years, the recorded road crash fatalities in Uganda rose from 2,579 to 3,503. So the chairperson regional lorry drivers and transporters association, Baron Chinene, has concerns of the need to sensitize transporters on road use and management. This is my appeal to the drivers. Please concentrate when you are driving. This is your job. This is, you, are the, you are the breadwinner. We are tired of seeing orphans and widows just because of accidents. We must stop accidents. We must take care when we are driving that we are the engine of the transport. The communications manager, Minister of Works and Transport, Susan Kataike, says government will introduce a technology that detects an original driving permit. Using the, the, the demerit system, whereby you, whenever you commit an offense, there are points there are points that you lose on your permit. And you will realize that if you continue being reckless and committing such offenses, you'll come to a point where your permit is cancelled and you cannot drive anymore. So these are some of the measures that government is looking at. Kataike says formation of transport organizations will help streamline the working conditions of transporters. Once a group of people are in these associations, they have a bigger bargaining power. They have a lot of leverage, so it's, it's for their good. Then secondly, you realize that uh, some of the fights that have been going on among taxi operators and owners are these charges. Drivers, conductors, they pay certain amounts of money for welfare and all kinds of things. And at the end of the day, some of them complain that they never get to see this money. Why? Partly because some of uh, some of these uh, these what we ca what they currently have the organs within which they operate are not properly regulated however for taxi operators government has some recommendations of course uh, government is also is also coming up with um, uh, we are trying to look at uh, a technology that uh, <clears throat> that can help you that can help identify an original a valid a valid permit and um, that provision will be that I, I can scan my permit, I can scan my original permit and have it on my phone. When I reach somewhere and traffic stops me, they can look at it even on my phone and verify it. So this is something that is still being refined. Charles Rumanika from Customs Department at Uganda Revenue Authority 
says there is need of expanding the scope of partnership with the private sector to improve compliance, especially during taxation. Putting road signs directing pedestrians and road drivers is a plan in the offing. Adia Nakuti and Sudat Kaye, UBC. Now, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation is planning to establish five municipal innovation centers to develop the emerging innovations among young people in the country. At the media brief on the forthcoming Kampala Innovation Week, the Director of Research and Innovation in the Ministry, Dr. Maxwell Otim, says government will support young entrepreneurs. Another one can use banana fibers. Uganda's economy is largely agriculture based. The sector that employs 70% of the population contributes about 24% of gross domestic products. Whereas the sector exports 40% products, the country is still faced with the seed input challenge. The seed is said to be either inadequate or substandard for farmers to boost agriculture. This is why State Minister of Agriculture Christopher Kivanzanga wants to address inconsistencies in supply of quality and sustainable availability of seeds. Government cabinet has taken a resolution to revive and build a seed company which will run as a parastatal. So that this seed company will work with narrow national agricultural research organization so that the mother seed, the foundation seed, the mother stock can only come from our research institution. A joint seed study visit to Uganda by five countries of Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Zambia and South Sudan was recently evident in Uganda. It looked forward to strengthening seed trade systems for increased seed trade in the ESC and Comesa regions. Africa Lead, a USAID seed pilot project and Comesa, a 21-member organization, supported the initiative. In Uganda, we agreed that agriculture, agriculture is private-led, private-led. And therefore, the role of government is only to regulate, is research and extension. Regulation, research and extension. That's what we had agreed. But we have discovered that along the way we are facing challenges in terms of our farmers accessing quality seed and affordable seed. So when we have good seed, it means that we are going to increase productivity or yields. Then of course we also increase the volumes. Uh, the seed that we are looking at should be having attributes of being uh, high yielding, but also we are looking at uh, seed that is tolerant or resistant to pests and diseases. We are also looking at seed which is also tolerant to drought. The USAID supported study focuses on enhancement of capacities, on policy formulation and strengthening institutions. One of the challenges that we identified through a study that we conducted previously was that there is uh, limited trust between countries. In as much as they have signed the policy, uh, the Comesa harmonized policy and the ESC uh, harmonized policy, the trade is still not taking place because countries are suspicious of each other's standards and processes. The engagement was concluded with a tour of seed laboratories in Kawanda, Isimba Maize Farm and Farm Inputs Care Center Factory found in Masindi and Malaba.
Dubai. Bet with One X Bet. Nkumba University plans to make its 23rd Open Volleyball Championship a memorable one because it comes on the eve of the university's 25 years of existence uh, celebrations. Hope is that proceeds from the 6th to 8th September will go towards facilitating heart surgery uh, operation, open heart surgery operation for 10-year-old Benedict Taku Takashava. Organizers also believe that a shift from its usual June debt to September will attract more teams to be able to topple host KCB Nkumba Volleyball Club. The, the championship itself, we're going to conduct a car wash as well as um, uh, we'll also dedicate proceeds coming from the, the championship to, to assist to our young friend here, the dictator, um, who, is, uh, who is having a complication. This year we've uh, also added the corporates category. As you notice, the club has, uh, over the years, made several friends and partnerships with uh, the corporates. And uh, there's always been a request to add this category. And this year, We've taken this bold step to have uh, the corporates joining us. So we'll have uh, the universities competing on Friday 6th so that they don't create a lot of interference with the clubs since uh, some players double in those categories. And the corporates will play only on Sunday 8th uh, for one day competition. Moving on, KCCA FC head coach Mike Mutebi has said his side is not worried despite losing the first leg of CAF Champions League qualifier. The gaffer has claimed that his side has enough armory to overturn results. KCCA FC is playing African Stars FC in Namibia in the return leg of CAF Champions League preliminaries on Friday at Star Time Stadium Lugogo. About his key players who have left the club for professional career, Mutebi said the club has 28 players who are capable of playing, though he admitted that they will miss the experience of some players on the continent, especially Timothy Awanyi and Kadu Patrick. He is also hoping to rely on the services of Habata Achai and Gift Ali, who have recovered from injuries. He explained that his new signings, John Levita and Simon Terunkuma, will miss out but will be eligible to play the next round. Uh, if his side happens to go through. If KCCA FC wins an aggregate, he, they will have to face the winner between Matlama and Luanda in double header before reaching the lucrative group stages. And with that, let's quickly take a look at the top stories for the night. Kosase discovers inconsistencies in the acquisition of Temangalo land. General Eli Tumwine to seek legal redress over a parliamentary report. Execution set for U.S. killer who preyed on gay men. And in sports, Bomber's captain Shadir Musa beaten at all African games in Morocco. Well, that does it. We do enjoy your company every night. I'm Rodan Gonzi on Sign Language. Magalu Mohammed. we leave you with uh, Alex with the weather update. It is time for the weather report from the Weather Center, only here on UBC TV with uh, Simpa Alex Kim.